Book of Ezekiel chapters 1 to 7. E Ezekiel chapter 1. Ezekiel and Babylon. Now it came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river of Shebar, that the heavens were open, and I saw visions of God. In the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year of King Joachim's captivity, the word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest, the son of Uzi, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Shebar, and the hand of the Lord was there upon him. The glory of the Lord. And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud, and a fire enfolding itself, and the brightness was built was about it. And out of the mist thereof, as the color of amber, out of the mist of the fire, also out of the mist thereof came the likeness of four living creatures and this was their appearance they had the likeness of a man and every one had four faces and every one had four wings and their feet were straight feet and their sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass and they had the hands of a man under their wings, on their four sides, and they four had their faces and their wings. Their wings were joined one to another. They turned not. When they went, they went every one straight forward. As for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of a man and the face of a lion on the right side and they four had the face of an oxen. The left side, they four also had the face of an angel, eagle, had the face of an eagle. Thus were their faces and their wings were stretched upward. Two wings of every one were joined one to another, and two converted their bodies and they went in every and and they went every one straight forward whither the spirit was to go they went and they turned not when they went for as the likeness of the living creatures their appearance was like burning coals of fire and like the appearance of lamps it went up and down among the living creatures and the fire was bright, and out of the fire went forth lighting, lightning. And the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning. Now as I beheld, I beheld the living creatures, behold, one wheel upon the earth by the living creatures with his four faces, the appearance of the wheels and their work was like unto the color of a barrel. And they four had one likeness and the other appearance, and their work was as it were a wheel, in the middle of a wheel. When they went, they went upon their four sides, and they turned not when they went. As for the, their rings, they were so high that they were dreadful, and their rings were full of eyes around about them four. And when the living creatures went, the wheels went by them. And when the living creatures were lifted up, up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up. Whither, whithersoever the spirit was to go, they went thither was their spirit to go, and the wheels were lifted up over against them, for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. When those went, these went, and when those stood, these stood. 
And when those were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up over against them. For the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels, and the likeness of a, the firmament upon the heads of the living creature was as the color of the terrible crystal stretched forth over their heads above. And under the firmament were their wings straight, the one toward the other, every one had two, which covered on this side, and every one had two, which covered on that side their bodies. And when they and when they went I heard the noise of their wings, like the noise of great rotters, as the voice of the Almighty, the voice of speech, as the noise of a host. Then they stood, they let down their wings, and there was a voice from the firmament that was over their heads, when they stood and had let down their wings. And above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne, as the appearance of a sapphire stone. And upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man, above upon it. And I saw as the color of amber, as the appearance of fire round about it, from the appearance of his loins, even upward, and from the appearance of his loins, even downward. I saw as it were the appearance of fire, and it had brightness round about, as the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain, so was the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord, and when I saw it I fell upon my face, and I heard a voice of one that spoke. Ezekiel's call. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. And the Spirit entered into me when he spoke unto me, and set me upon my feet. And I heard him that spoke unto me. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel to a rebellious nation that had rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me even unto this very day. For they are impotent children and stiff-hearted. I do not send thee unto them, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus said the Lord God, and they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. For they are a rebellious house, yet, shall know that there had been a prophet among them. And though son of man be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns be with thee, and though dost dwell among scorpions, be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at the looks, though they may be a re rebellious house. And thou speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. For they are most rebellious. But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like the rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. And when I looked, behold, a hand was sent to me, and at lo, a roll of a book was therein. And he spread it before me, and it was written within and without. There was written therein lamentations and mourning and woe. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest, eat this roll, and go spread speak unto the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I gave thee. Then did I eat it, 
and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. And he said unto me, Son of man, go get thee unto the house of Israel, and speak with my words unto them. For thou art not sent to a people for of a strange speech, of an hard language, but to the house of Israel. Not too many of strange speech and of a hard language, whose words thou canst not understand. Surely, had I seen thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces, and they forehead strong against their foreheads. As an ment harder than flint have I made thy forehead. Fear them not, neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto thee receive in thy heart, and hear with thy ears. And go, get thee to them of the captivity unto the children of thy people, and speak unto them and tell them, Thus said the Lord God, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. Then the Spirit took me up, and I heard behind me a voice of great rushing, saying, Blessed be the glory of the Lord from his place. I heard also the noise of the wings of the living creatures that touched one another, and the noise of the wheels over against them, and the noise of a great rushing. So the Spirit lifted me up and took me away, and I went in bitterness. In the heat of my spirit, but the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. Then I came to them of the captivity at Talabib, that dwelt by the river of Shebar, that I sat where they sat, and remained there, astonished among them seven days. A watchman for Israel. And it came to pass at the end of seven days, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth, and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity but his blood will I require at thy hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I say a stumbling block before him, he shall die, because Thou hast not given him warning, he shall die in his sin, and his righteousness, which he had done, shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require at thy hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, he doth not sin, he shall surely live, because he is warned. Also thou hast delivered thy soul. And the hand of the Lord was upon me, and he said unto me, Arise, go forth into the plain, and I will there talk with thee. Then I arose and went forth into the plain, and behold, the glory of the Lord stood there. As the glory which I saw by the river of Shebar, and I fell on my face, then the Spirit entered on into me, and set me, apart, set me upon my feet, and spoke with me, and said unto me, Go, shut thyself within thy house. But though, O son of man, behold, they shall put bands upon thee, and shall bind thee with them, and thou shalt not go out among them. 
and I will make thy tongue cleave to the roof of thy mouth. Thou shalt be dumb, and shalt not be to them a reprover, for they are of a rebellious house. But when I speak with thee, I will open thy mouth, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus said the Lord God, He that hear it, let him hear, and he that forbear, let him forbear. For they are a rebellious house. Chapter 4 The Siege of Jerusalem Symbolized Thou also, son of man, take thee a tile, tile and lay it before thee, and pour tray upon it the city, even Jerusalem, and lay siege against it, and build a fort against it, and cast a mount against it, set the camp also against it, and set battering rams against it, round about. Moreover, take thou unto thee an iron pan, and set it for a wall of iron between thee and the city, and set thy face against it, and it shall be besieged. And thou shalt lay siege against it. This shall be a sign to the house of Israel. Lie thou also upon thy, thy, thy left side, and lay the iniquity of the house of Israel upon it. According to the number of the days, thou shalt lie upon it, thou shalt bear their iniquity. For I have laid upon thee the years of their iniquity, according to the number of the days, three hundred and ninety days, so shalt thou bear the iniquity of the house of Israel. And when thou hast accomplished them, lie again on the right side, and thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah forty days. I have Pointed thee each day for a year. Therefore, thou shalt set thy face toward the siege of Jerusalem, and thy arm shall be uncovered, and thou shalt prophesy against it. And behold, I will lay bands upon thee, and thou shalt not turn thee from one side to another, till thou hast ended the days of thy siege. Take, take thou also unto thee wheat, and barley, and beans, and lentils, and millet, and fritches, and put them in one vessel, and make thee bread thereof, according to the number of the days thou, that thou shalt lie upon thy side. Three hundred and ninety days shalt thou eat thereof, and thy meat which thou shalt eat shall be by weight, twenty shekels a day, from time to time shalt thou eat it. Thou shalt drink also water by measure, the sixth part of a hin, from time to time shalt thou drink. And thou shalt eat it as barley cakes, and thou shalt break, bake it, with dung that cometh out of a man in their sight. And the Lord said, Even Thus shalt the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles, whether I will drive them. Then said I, Ah, the Lord God, behold, my soul had not been polluted. For from my youth up even till now have I not eaten of that which dieth of itself or is torn in pieces, neither came there abominable, abdom, abdominal flesh into my mouth. Then he said unto me, Lo, I have given thee cow's dung for man's dung, and thou shalt prepare thy bread therewith. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, behold, I will break the staff of bread in Jerusalem, and they shall eat bread by weight and with care, and they shall drink water by measure and with astonishment, that they may want bread and water and be a stone one with another and consume away for their iniquity. Chapter 5 Jerusalem will be destroyed. 
And thou, son of man, take thee a sharp knife, take thee a barber's razor, and cause it to pass upon thy head and upon thy beard. Then take thee balances to weigh and divide the hair. Thou shalt burn with fire a third part in the midst of the, of the city. When the days of the siege are fulfilled, and thou shalt take a third part and smite about it with a knife, and a third part thou shalt scatter in the wind, and I will draw out a sword after them. Thou shalt also take thereof a few in number, and bind them in thy skirts. Then take of them again, and cast them into the midst of the fire, and burn them in the fire, for thereof shall a fire come forth into all the house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord God, This is Jerusalem. I have set it in the midst of the nations and countries that are round about her. And she had changed my judgment into wickedness, more than the nations and my statues, more than the countries that are round about her. For they have refused my judgments and my statues, they have not walked in them. Therefore, thus said the Lord God, Because ye multiplied more than the nations that are round about you, and have not walked in my statues, neither have kept my judgments, neither have done according to the judgments of the nations that are round about you. Therefore, thus said the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, am against thee, I will, and will execute judgments in the midst of thee, in the sight of the nations. And I will do in thee that which I have not done, and whereunto I will not do any more, the like because of all thine abominations. Therefore the father shall eat the sons in the midst of thee, and the sons shall eat their fathers. And I will execute judgments in thee, and the whole remnant of thee will I scatter into all the winds. Wherefore, as I live, said the Lord God, surely because thou hast defiled my sanctuary with all thy detestable things, and with all thine abominations, therefore will I also diminish thee, neither shall my eye spare, neither will I have any pity. A third part of thee shall die with the pestilence, and with famine shall they be consumed in the midst of thee, and a third part shall fall by the sword round about thee. And I will scatter a third part into the winds, and I will draw out a sword after them. Thus shall my anger be accomplished, and I will cause my fury to rest upon them, and I will be comforted, and they shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it in my zeal, when I have accomplished my fury in them. Moreover, I will make thee waste, and a reproach among the nations that are round about thee, in the sight of all that pass by. So it shall be a reproach and a taunt, an instruction and an astonishment unto the nations that are around about thee, when I shall execute judgments in thee in anger, in fury, and in furious rebukes. I, the Lord, have spoken it. When I shall send upon them the evil arrows of famine, which shall be for their destruction, and which I will send to destroy you, and I will increase the famine upon you, and will break your staff of bread. So will I send upon you famine and evil beasts, and they shall bereave thee, and pestilence and blood shall pass through thee, and I will bring the sword upon thee. I, the Lord, have spoken it. Ezekiel chapter 6, Judgment Against Idolatry And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face toward the mountains of Israel, and prophesy against them, and say, Ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord God. Thus said the Lord God to the mountains, and to the hills, to the rivers, and to, and to the valleys. Behold, I even I will bring a sword upon you, 
and I will destroy your high places and your altars shall be desolate and your images shall be broken and I will cast down your slain men before your idols and I will lay the dead carcasses of the children of Israel before their idols and I will scatter your bones round about your altars in all your dwelling places the cities shall be laid waste and the high places shall be desolate that your altars may be laid waste and made desolate and your idols may be broken and cease and your images may be cut down your works may be abolished and the slain shall fall in the midst of you and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Yet will I leave a remnant that ye may have some that shall escape the sword among the nations when ye shall be scattered up through the countries. And they that escape of you shall remember me among the nations, whither they shall be carried captives because I am broken with the whorish heart which had departed from me and with their eyes which go a whoring after their idols and they shall lot themselves for the evils which they have committed in all their abominations and they shall know that I am the Lord and that I have not said in vain that I would do this evil unto them. Thus said the Lord God, smite with thy hand and stamp with thy foot and say, Alas, for all the evil abominations of the house of Israel, for they shall fall by the sword, by the famine and by the pestilence. He that is far off shall die of the pestilence and he that is near shall fall by the sword. And he that remaineth and is beseeched shall die by the famine. Thus will I accomplish my fury upon them. Then shall ye know that I am the Lord, when their slain men shall be among their idols, round about their altars, upon every high hill, in all the tops of the mountains, and under every green tree, and under every thick oak, the place where they did offer sweet savor to their, to all their idols. So I will stretch out my hand upon them and make the land desolate. Yes, more desolate than the water wilderness toward Dalbla in all their habitations. And they shall know that I am the Lord. Chapter 7 the day of the wrath of the Lord. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Also, though son of man, thus said the Lord God unto the land of Israel, and then end, the end is come upon the four corners of the land. Now is the end come upon thee, and I will send my anger upon thee, and will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense upon thee all thy abominations and my eye shall not spare thee neither will I have pity but I will recompense thy ways upon thee and thy abomination shall be in the midst of thine and ye shall know that I am the Lord thus said the Lord God an evil and only evil behold is come an end is come the end is come it watcheth for thee, behold, it is come. The morning is come unto thee, O thou that dwellest in the land, the time is come. The day of trouble is near, and not the sounding again of the mountains. Now will I shortly pour out my fury upon thee, and accomplish my anger upon thee, and I will judge the, thee according to thy ways and will recompense thee for all thy abominations. And my, and my eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. 
I will recompense thee according to thy ways and thy abomination that are in the midst of thee. And ye shall know that I am the Lord that smitted. Behold, the day, behold, it is come. The morning is gone forth. The rod that had blossomed, pride had budded. Violence is risen up unto the rod of wickedness. None of them shall remain, nor, nor of their multitude, nor of any of theirs, neither shall there be wailing for them. The time is come, the day draw it near. Let not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn, for wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. The seller shall not return to that which is sold, although they were yet alive, for the vision of touching the whole multitude thereof, which shall not return, neither shall any strengthen himself in the iniquity of his life. They have blown the trumpet, even to make all ready, but none goeth to the battle, for my wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. The sword is without, and the pestilence and the famine within. He that is in the field shall die with the sword, and he that is in the city famine and pestilence shall devour him. But they that escape of them shall escape, and shall be on the mountains like doves of the valleys, all of them mourning, every one of his iniquity. All hands shall be feeble, and all knees shall be weaker, weak as water. They shall also gird themselves with sackcloth, and horror shall cover them, and shame shall be upon all faces, and baldness upon all their heads. They shall cast their silver in the streets, and their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. As their beauty is of his ornament, he set in it majesty. But they made the images of their abominations and of their detestable things therein. Therefore have I set it far from them. And I will give it into the hands of the strangers for a prey, and to the wicked of the earth of us for spoil, and they shall pollute it. My face will I turn also from them, and they shall pollute my secret place for the robbers shall enter into it and defile it. Make a chain, for the land is full of bloody crimes, and the city is full of violence. Wherefore I will bring the worst of the heathen, and they shall possess their houses. I will also make the pomp of the strong to cease, and their holy places shall be defiled. Destruction cometh, and they shall seek peace and there shall be none. Mischief shall come upon mischief, and rumor shall be upon rumor. Then shall they speak a vision of the prophet, but the law shall perish from the priest, and counsel from the ancients. The king shall mourn, and the prince shall be clothed with desolation, and the hands of the people of the land shall be troubled. I will do unto them after their way, and according to their deserts, the desert will I judge them, and they shall know that I am the Lord. The book of the prophet Ezekiel. Ezekiel was a priest who had been living in Jerusalem during the first Babylonian attack on the city. And they spared the city, but they took a first wave of Israelite prisoners and hauled them off into exile, and Ezekiel was among them. 
So the book begins five years after all that, and Ezekiel is sitting on the bank of an irrigation canal near his Israelite refugee camp, and it's his 30th birthday, no less, the year that he would have been installed as a priest in Jerusalem. And then all of a sudden, Ezekiel has this vision. He sees a storm cloud approaching, and then inside the cloud are four strange creatures that have wings outstretched and touching each other. And these creatures each had four faces. And then he saw four wheels, one by each each creature. And then he saw that the wings of the creatures were supporting this dazzling platform. And then on that platform is a throne. And then sitting on that throne is this human-like creature glowing and shrouded in fire. And then all of a sudden Ezekiel realizes what he's seeing. He calls it the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. It's God riding his royal throne chariot. Now the word glory, in Hebrew it's kavod, it means heavy or significant. The biblical authors use this word to describe the physical appearance and manifestation of God's significance when he shows up in person. These images in the vision, they're very similar to what happened when God appeared on Mount Sinai in the book of Exodus. And it's also very similar to the depictions of God's presence over the Ark of the Covenant. And that's actually the most shocking thing about Ezekiel's vision. What is God's glory doing in Babylon? It's supposed to be above the Ark of the Covenant, in the temple, in Jerusalem. And so the first section of the book opens to explore that question as Ezekiel begins to accuse Israel of rebellion. So God first speaks to Ezekiel from the throne chariot and he commissions him as a prophet. Ezekiel is to accuse Israel of breaking their covenant agreement with God in a couple ways. Israel has given their allegiance to other gods and has been worshiping idols and this has all led to rampant social injustice and violence. And so as a result, God appoints Ezekiel to warn the people. The first Babylonian attack that took Ezekiel into exile is going to be matched by another. And Jerusalem, its temple, all face imminent destruction. So Ezekiel uses words and more to get his message across. He also performs sign acts. These were a form of street theater. Ezekiel would go out in public and start behaving in these really bizarre ways that were like parables of his prophetic message. So he was supposed to build a tiny model of Jerusalem and then stage an attack on it. Or he was to shave off all of his hair and then chop it up with a sword. Or the most extreme, he was to play the role of the scapegoat on the Day of Atonement. And he would lay on his side for over a year eating food cooked over poop as a sign of the nasty food that people will have to eat during the siege of Jerusalem. And perhaps the most disheartening thing of all is the bad news God gave Ezekiel that no one was going to listen to him. Israel would reject him because of their rebellious and hard heart. And this recalls Moses' description of the people after the wilderness rebellions, when he predicted that exile would one day happen. And Ezekiel had the unfortunate privilege of seeing it all come to pass. And so a dismayed Ezekiel, he begins to perform his task. And after about a year, he has another vision. This one is about the temple. He goes on this virtual tour of the temple and he sees what's happening there in his absence and it is not good. In the outer courtyard in front of the temple, he sees this large idol statue. And then he sees the elders of Israel worshiping other gods, both outside and inside the temple. And then he sees the women of Israel. They're worshiping a Babylonian god named Tammuz. And the vision ends with God's glorious throne chariot moving up and away from the temple. It's leaving, going east, headed towards Babylon. And so in chapter 11, we come to see why and how God's glory appeared to Ezekiel there in Babylon. Israel's idolatry and their covenant violations, it's become so blatant and offensive that God has left his temple. They've driven him away and he consigns it to destruction. But God hasn't abandoned his people. Rather, he goes into exile with them. And so at the end of this vision in chapter 11, God promises that he will return a remnant of Israel back to the land and he'll transform them by removing their heart of stone and giving them a new soft heart of flesh so that they can love and truly follow their God after all. This is a small glimmer of hope and it's quickly submerged under the reality of the imminent destruction. But chapter 11, it's a key transition and it helps us understand 
understand how the rest of the book has been designed. So the next three sections are all announcements of God's judgment, first on Israel, then on the nations around Israel, and then on Jerusalem itself. But then after that, the hopeful conclusion of chapter 11 gets developed in the final three sections of the book. First hope for Israel, then for the nations, and then for all creation. Chapters 12 through 24 focus on God's judgment coming to Israel. And this is a diverse collection of poems and essays. And here Ezekiel shows his fondness for parable and allegory. So he depicts Israel as a burnt, useless stick, or as a rebellious wife, or as a dangerous, raging lion that gets captured, or as two promiscuous sisters. These are all depictions of Israel's senseless rebellion and idolatry that results in their ruin. In this section, Ezekiel also acts like a lawyer. He begins arguing the case that, first of all, Jerusalem's destruction is truly deserved after centuries of covenant violation. And that even if the most righteous people in the world, like Noah or Daniel or Job, were alive and praying for God to spare Israel, God would not accept their prayers. It's far too late. And so God's goodness actually demands that he bring justice on this generation of Israel. The exile has become inevitable. They've reached the point of no return. Following this, Ezekiel focuses first on the nations immediately around Israel, and then on the two most powerful states in the region, Egypt and then Tyre. Israel has allied with these nations and adopted their gods and their idols. And so God accuses the kings of Tyre and Egypt for arrogantly viewing themselves as gods who get to define right and wrong on their own terms. And God holds these kings accountable for their pride and he announces that he will use Babylon to bring them down. They will face God's justice along with everybody else. Following these really intense sections is a short story in chapter 33. Ezekiel's met by a refugee who's just arrived from Jerusalem, and he gives them the report that Babylon has attacked the city of Jerusalem, that the city has fallen, and the temple is destroyed. Ezekiel's grim warnings have become a reality. But remember, the end of chapter 11, that's not the end of the story. And so in the next video, we'll explore Ezekiel's profound vision of hope. But for now, that's the first half of the book of Ezekiel.
Defeat